thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Canadian the Canadian Association of Civil Liberties fights, has been fighting for freedom. This was founded in 1964. It is independent, national, not-for-profit, non-governmental organization. We engage the judicial, executive, and legislative branches of the state wherever they exercise power at the expense of Canadians and their civil liberties. Our September 18, 2017 brief to the House of Commons Standing Committee on Justice and Human Rights is 19 pages of brilliant detail authored by Dr. R. DeLuca. I will spare you uh, a close reading of that, but I commend it to you. Uh, I say to you, um, Mr. Chair, uh, as, a, as, the th as the 35th Attorney General of Ontario, uh, that this uh, bill is truly an affront uh, to the many provinces in this country and to our federalist system, where in British Columbia, Ontario, and Quebec have quite different approaches to dealing with uh, impaired driving. And instead of taking the best of those approaches or uh, a combination of those approaches, Ottawa has decided that it knows better and it's going to come up with its own approach that supposedly will uh, make us uh, safer, uh, but most definitely will be a step backwards for civil liberties in Canada. It is the most illiberal of bills, punitive to the poor, and lends legal authority to justify systemic discrimination. It will also jack up demand upon provincial legal aid resources with no corresponding aid to Legal Aid Ontario and their national uh, counterpart. I'm going to deal with two provision, two sections in particular. The first one is regarding mandatory screening or random breath testing. This is legalized carding. That's what it is. When you set up a random breath test at Jane and Finch in Toronto, in uh, parts of uh, Winnipeg, Vancouver, uh, in the Muslim neighborhoods of Maple, uh, and in ethnic neighborhoods in Halifax, it is going to feel to all those residents as if the police are targeting them because of the color of their skin, the language they use, or the religion that they share. Uh, it means a proliferation of racial profiling depending on where the, the random breath testing takes place. The section 320.27 sub 2 uh, we submit ought to be removed. It is a huge shift in our criminal justice system. A warrantless search without cause, a warrantless seizure of our very breath and bodily fluids without cause. Uh, this is a dramatic departure uh, from the way in which this country and the Charter of Rights has operated. It will be uh, now a crime for an individual to refuse a warrantless, without cause seizure of their breath. Uh, and it'll be no defense that they didn't know about C-46. Next, uh, and in conclusion, the mandatory fines of $2,000. I'm sure that the senators are aware that $2,000 is an unpayable fine for a distinct population in this country. Uh, it is a fundamental principle of justice in Canada that if an individual cannot pay a fine, a judge ought not uh, impose a fine upon a person. But a mandatory fine flies in the face of that. This chamber, of all chambers, knows uh, that principles of deterrence uh, don't work and are routinely disproven by criminology. Uh, as such, uh, we're recommending the removal of section 320.19 sub 3 and sub 4 and calling for the amendment of 320.19 sub 1 sub A by adding the word presumptive to the words minimum punishment. Lastly, the bill's retrospective punitive approach is a step backwards, crippling the innovative rehabilitative courts in Quebec, Ontario, and many other provinces. It's a step backwards crippling indigenous sentencing circles because it takes away from those courts the ability to deal with particular offenses because of the mandatory penalties. 
and C46 continues the willful blindness of Parliament to the contribution of alcoholism and addiction to impaired driving. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Bryan.